Hello, and welcome back to Forspoken. This is a long video, so I split it into two parts. This part will of course be the run up to Tanta Silo and the boss fight, and then the second part will be the aftermath. So as you can see, I did it off screen, uh, doing the uh, bind and shield challenges. Genesis I'm not quite there with yet because there's just not that many enemies right now that are actually explicitly vulnerable to phrase magic. Which is not really worth trying to grind that out right now. So I figured I'd activate these and then try and find a couple of spells that would be particularly useful against the upcoming uh, situation with Tanta Sailor. So we just got a shot level two. I'm going to try and uh, do the challenges for Prime and Implant. Because they seem like they'll be the most useful things for the upcoming fight. Anything intriguing? So let's go into this actual bookshelf so we can actually activate those challenges. Spurs is not much use because there's not many flying enemies right now. But knock enemies down and attack enemies with implant, that seems simple enough. Time to work on that spell then. Making sure everything's equipped properly. And it's time to head towards the side path, not the front gate, because the front gate's slightly too dangerous. I've actually never taken the front gate before. So I figured we'd just stick to the side path because it's the one I know. Who's there? Looks like the poor souls who used to it. Sorry, but I need to get by. Another way I think I might as well get a few shots in with these spells just to kind of get a bit of a head start. I mean, that wasn't much use for Prime because it didn't actually knock them over, but it is quite satisfying when it just instantly disintegrates the enemy. <laughs> That's always fun. I quite like that these birds are clearly peacocks as well, that's a fun visual thing with like the really long tail feathers and everything like that. There's some really fun enemy designs in this game. Malcolm, you can generally tell you out of danger when the little experience bar comes up. It's a nice little way of showing that um, you're safe to do like fast traveling and things. It's a nice tell. Because sometimes in some games like Far Cry and things like that, you can just be running away for a while and not quite realize. And yeah, that was pretty satisfying. I quite like that you can actually shoot the bombs as well. Uh, okay. To kind of like force them to explode early like and here. just scatter enemies. That's quite Good a satisfying little tactic. So the taunt has caused the break, right? It certainly seems that way. After all, it appears to be thickest around the castle. So if we get rid of them, we get rid of the break too? I'd say it's a possibility, but I wouldn't get your hopes up too much. Why not? It just seems rather persistent. You might stop it from getting worse, but as to getting rid of it entirely, Right on the money! Ah. Oh. Got you on your toes now! Oh, those little goblin guys as well. They're quite cute. This'll do it! Oh. 
so of course that's where we're trying to get to, up this big cliff. No, it's the castle. If we can find it, we might be able to sneak in on the texture. I like the passage is bright red as well, it's a very distinctive look. This is because there's a lot of like these red crystals everywhere and things. It makes it very easy to see the path and know where you're meant to be going. Especially because half of it's also made of what's left of the ramparts of the castle. We have put Tendril on because we need a bit more health and it could have been helpful if we came across enough enemies surrounding us to quickly heal with the Tendril but it didn't end up working out that way. Especially because we just have the healing drafts that makes it a lot easier. <laughs> Now we could have magic parkoured it, but I figured it'd be funnier to take the actual ladder. <laughs> Just keep very humble. <laughs> See, what did I tell you? Oh, ye of little faith. So much for plugging the gap in her defences. All right, let's go find where this is. And here we have more lore. Just more talking about how powerful Sila generally is and how. Great she is in battle and things. Yeah, we get kind of stunned there when the break starts. A little annoying. That's not doing much. Why did she build a castle on top of this stupid cliff? Possibly so she could look down on all of her enemies. Sounds like a fun hobby. So the important thing isn't them, the important thing of course is getting to this point because now we have to fight these ones. And of course there's one of those winged people at the back as well. They're kind of hard to notice right now because everything's kind of blue and dark. But there she is. Yep. Nope. Not working. But implant and prime are always quite handy because implant is just kind of like a poison spell basically. Because it's constantly draining the health a little bit. So at least there's only one of her, and then like a bunch of shield guys. How'd you like this? These winged guys though do take quite a long to win. These winged women do take quite a lot to take down, but they have a lot of health. Huh. Got a present for ya. It can make them a little bit annoying because they just take so long to take down. But that helps. Ready for this? Let's quickly take advantage of that to do quite a lot of damage to her. And take out at least one of her wings too. a bit of trouble there. <laughs> but now she's down. Let's take care of this guy now. Let's get behind him and finish him off. And a new nail design too, which is nice. This looks like it. Be on my guard. And here's our entrance. 
I quite like that the big storm disperses as soon as you get inside. And it's just, it's quite a nice palace, really. It's nice to just have a bit of a chance to just relax a little bit between the fighting and just kind of enjoy the inside of Tyler's palace. Now, some of the chests that we're seeing in these other areas aren't actually inside the palace, they're kind of outside on the ramparts, so we'll be ignoring them for now. That's handy, another the healing draft, because we need that. Get back to Max. The break's getting really quite bad. Yeah, kind of gateway to hell vibes. Oh, very. Should have cut that one off, but no. Whoa. Check out these paintings. I most certainly will, as should you. Know your enemy and all that. So that's And here's the complete oh. version. Not anymore. Of the painting. I wonder why they turned on their own people. I okay, we do get like a complete version of the one painting that we actually have in our invent in our like data log thing. The one that's just of the four tanters where the faces are all scratched out. The Purge of the Red Egg. Yeah, I saw that mentioned in a book from the archives. So the Athians fought a war way back when? Yes, the Reddig were their opponents, I believe. And the Tantas led their people into battle. Indeed they did. Quite literally, they fought on the very front lines. Wow. They were pretty good leaders before they went batshit crazy, huh? Now, we already know that, but that's because we've been doing optional stuff in those, like, labyrinths. That's more for the players that Never heard of the Red Egg because he didn't do the labyrinths and see all the stuff with the first Tanta, <laughs> the demon they released. So here's just a little bit of lore about the Red Egg. Just some more basic stuff. Now let's meet the other Tantas. Tanta Prav herself. Looks a little judgy, but fair, I guess. The Tanta of Justice. I could tell. Spend plenty of time standing in front of women like that. Lawbreaker, eh? I'm not proud of it. Look, I didn't make society. I just had to survive in it. I think Prob is actually probably one of my favourite ones, but well, we haven't got to her yet, so I won't be able to go into much de detail. We already know that this is the Tanta of War, or alternately known as the Tanta of Strength. Tanta of Strength. But you knew that already, of course. Yup, you can tell she's the one in charge. Looks tough as hell, too. Very impressive. No wonder the people trusted her to lead them into battle. <sighs> Propaganda. So, so far we've got a judge, a warrior. Let's see what the other two are. Ah, uh, that would be Tanta Sinta. Wow, she's beautiful. Yes, she does possess a certain aesthetic appeal. No, I mean like from the inside, it shines through her. She was the Tanta of love. Those eyes, so kind, so... Comforting. So tragic. For all that innocent purity to be twisted by madness. Take a look at her archive entry. We see she was the doctor.
So what does that leave? The venerable Tanta Olas. She looks smart. She was the Tanta of Wisdom. I had a teacher like her. Same look in her eye. You went to school? Believe it or not, I didn't spend my entire childhood developing a tough street girl persona. Mm. Could have fooled me. And of course, the teacher. I quite like how they are kind of characterised. The Tanta of Love was a healer, keeping her people safe and protected. The Tanta of Knowledge was a teacher, Feeling more knowledgeable or wisdom mother. And then the Tanta of War, of war uh, and Strength yeah, kind of just... Little, I guess. You can kind of imagine she probably it's kept her people real. generally quite strong in her own way. Before going rabid. But we'll get more detail about their exact natures later on. Frey. No name for a demon. I am surprised you made it this far. I'm impressed. Is that actually you? Or are you hiding behind one of your puppets again? I am the one you seek. The one and only Tanta Sila. So? Face to face with the kitty killer herself. There will always be casualties in war. Great. No war, no casualties. Sounds good to me. Simple minded. Silly girl. Naive. There will always be war. No, there doesn't have to be. But you and your goons don't care who you hurt. You killed a child. A little girl. Her blood is on your hands. No. It is you who trespassed on my land. You who set this battle in motion. You disregard rules and then act as if you are the victim. Take responsibility for your actions as I will for mine. No time like the present. Oh, what the hell? <laughs> This is how you wish to proceed. So be it! Time for the boss fight with Tanta Sila. You are quicker than you look, demon. Perhaps it is not luck alone that brought you here. Let us see what else you have to show me. So she has five ults, but also she's pretty good at close quarters combat. But that means Poe does have a bit of an advantage here because most of her magic is long range. We got this. So we just need to be careful about Sally closing the distance with her swords. I will cut you to ribbons! I do like the irony as well though that Sila is just refusing to take responsibility for herself, just twisting everything, blaming it on others. Huh. Finally. Good night. A challenge! Obviously, this section of the game is trying to draw Wild's Muslim and parallels with her being the um, Queen of Hearts. Wicked demon! How dare you besmirch my armor! You will regret this! <sighs> Not if this is the best you've got. Champions of, of course, the problem with that I've Zeta. already got into. Hiding behind her minions again? I thought Tantas was supposed to be powerful. Foolish child. This has been nothing but sport. It is time for you to learn what my soldiers are truly capable of. Loathsome creature, you shall be hounded to your doom. Yep. So you don't actually have to worry about the soldiers, just oh. kind of ignore them, you focus on Sila. Which is more dangerous one anyway, well, we can just knock the soldiers down quite easily. <laughs> So just focus Sila down, really. She hasn't got that much health. She is the first major boss fight after all. I mean, technically the dragon's the first actual boss fight, but like, by major, I of course mean the first one you have to work to get to. The dragon's kind of a tutorial fight. Did you think I 
wouldn't let you leave here unscathed. Bring it on. Do not allow the demon to flee! You will burn for humiliating me! This may not be good. Her anger is fueling her power. Well, you know what? She's not the only one who's pissed off. Time to finish this. The quote is in blue as well. We're basically breaking her mask as well. We're kind of like, um, we're going to make her see sense if we have to beat it into her. <laughs> we're going to open her eyes if we have to pull them out of the sockets to do so. Of course, Sarah looks like she's before the health, but I think she has a little bit less health in this form. I do quite like the aesthetic though of the whole, like, she's now destroyed the entire arena because of her rage. Like, she built this castle, now she can unmake it. Yeah, I got kind of unlucky there. <laughs> you think you can defeat me? Do your work. We just so happen to have finished off those your objectives as well, which is nice. So now she's using her um big attack. Of course, this is her surge magic. I think we got kind of lucky not getting caught in it though. What's the I like the double spears as well, that's a fun move. I can already hear those of you who hate the whole creepy dialogue thing will probably be groaning at the leveled up line. <laughs> I mean, there are a lot of people that um, sort of accuse Frey of not taking adventuring seriously enough, being overly quippy and things like that. But I believe this is about to dispel that.
See, all, also, all those all the extra little things we got for time to flow audio log, I'll include any interesting stuff in her bio in the second post. I've finally written that up. What's wrong? You're awfully quiet. I just took someone's life. With good reason. The people of Sipor will thank you for it. I really thought it would... I don't know. I, I just wanted to punish her. I thought it would make me feel better. But it didn't? No. It's no easy thing to take the life of another. Well, I've taken out break zombies, but only in self-defense. This I did out of anger. It was premeditated. It was self-preservation. She was never going to stop coming after you. More innocents would have died. More Olivia's. I guess. Kill one to save many, right? Exactly. I think it's causing it to also reflect on Billette's line as well. <laughs> About sacrificing one life to save many. She's starting to really understand what that means. Hey, Cuff. You didn't do badly, you know. She was no ordinary opponent. Was that a compliment? Don't point at it. How do you feel? Mentally, a four. Physically, a ten. Oddly, I feel pretty good for a girl who's just had the shit kicked out of her. You absorbed Sila's energy, it restored your strength, healed you. No shit, I was there. And, as you put it, you leveled up. The binding spell the taunt has placed upon me seems to have loosened a little too. Much obliged. Well, whatever happened, it's gonna make surviving in this fun house easier for both of us. Brighter paths ahead. Time to head back to Sapor and tell the people that Sila's shadow no longer hangs over. Now Sile is gone, I just need to get Bob to teach me how to use the Tirana. Then I'm out of here. You really think he's in a fit state to teach you anything? I have to believe he is. Gotta think positive. Can't wait to click my heels three times. Is that how your people celebrate victory or something? You really do have the strangest customs. By the way, I think I'm starting to understand these Affian letters. Oh, I'm very impressive. Swift learner, eh? I actually picked up on French pretty quickly when I was in school. Is that another Earth language? Oui, monsieur. That's a yes, I take it? So, as they mentioned, we now have new magic. Now we can use Silas moveset, which is quite fun. And that also gives us a new movement ability that's very, very useful and very versatile. The zip. Why don't we try out your new gifts? <sighs> yeah, why not? So if you hold square, we can pick an anchor point, which is this little gold thing, and zip to it. This is probably one of the most useful spells, especially in the early game, because you may notice as well, there's that gold spear there. We've seen that colour before. Anything that's that colour, including those gold crystals we've seen around the world as well, we can zip to, and it will do this. Whoa. It'll launch us in the direction, which is very handy. So we still have to be quite careful though, and just kind of like, we can break our forward zip quite nicely as well, like this, we don't just land really hard. But also, if you notice, Zip is using our stamina. So we can't just Zip willy-nilly. So we can also cool. switch to her moveset as Not well. Now one on is magic. Mm. And the current spells we have are very simple. We have a sword. Which is nice. 
That actually reminds me a lot of it. This game actually reminds me a lot of Primal, complete with the fire um, abilities, having a sword is like its main thing. Going from Primal, you had like the, uh, the Vulcan abilities, you have the twin swords and then the bigger sword they fills into. And you also have this cool charge ability. And some others as well, like the Fusillade, which is hard to use if you don't know what you're doing with it, because what it does is it summons these little swords. And they don't seem to be doing anything, but that's because the trick to them is if you're mashing the button, they don't really do much. If you read the description, which I'm about to do, they actually attack enemies in a particular circumstance. Yeah, they attack while you're charging other spells. So they're mostly there as a kind of like a secondary attack, so that while you're charging a bigger attack, like I'm at the moment, they'll fly out, but I believe they only actually fly out yeah. when you're not done charging yet. So they can be quite difficult to use effectively. You just kind of have to get them out and just kind of let them do their own thing. So we that can't zip up there, but... I don't think we really need to, we can just do this. So I want to get to this. So I'd like to take this photo before we leave. In the frame you go. So at this point in the game, we could quite easily just zip straight over to Athia with our fast travel. But there's something else I want to do first. But it requires a bit of a detour. Yeah, as it's mentioning, it's wanting us to zip back to Sepal with our fast travel, but it's just a way to say we need to keep our eyes peeled. Yeah, that sounds disgusting. Forget it. Just stay alert. There might be monsters. Peeled eyes, indeed. Do you realise we're not the monsters here? Like his reactions, that metaphor. <laughs> so yeah, before we actually go all the way back to Sepal. There's something else I want to do first, which is to go all the way south from here. Because there is this. I want this. This is not as short a distance as it looks. We have to go all the way around through the Field of the Fallen to the east. But we find this little fast travel point. Happy as I'll ever be. Yeah, mostly including the fast travel points we're unlocking on the way. And I believe any photos we take as well, just to kind of keep you abreast of any main collectibles. But I'm avoiding any kind of fortresses or villages and things, because A, at this point in the game, a lot of them are going to have enemies that are way too hard for us, because we're not meant to be going behind the castle right now. We're not meant to be in the Fields of the Fallen yet, we're meant to just head straight back to Sepal, but I want the thing. So let's keep going, shall we? Deeper into the Fields of the Fallen. We'll see plenty of this later on when I'm actually exploring the areas in, in videos later on. But for now, this is just traversal. Through the upper hills. You can see we're at the ocean as well here. We're right at the far edge of the of Prenost. Let's go even further. Not there, though. All the way over there. <laughs> you can see how far we have to go. We have to go all the way east and all the way west. While going south the whole way. It's a long journey. Hence me cutting out so much of it. Just showing interesting little checkpoints. And of course, on the way here, there's a lot of going down. Because a lot of this area of Pranos is actually in like a massive canyon. It's kind of hard to tell, but it is. There's a lot of like large sort of dips in the landscape. And of course I went the wrong way there, so we need to go in the other direction. We actually need to go a bit back up and then go for this way. Because now we can actually see it's on the screen. It's two kilometers in this direction, that's a long way. That's kind of like, I think it was almost as long as it took for us to actually get to the castle from Sepal. So this is no small journey that we're taking. 
but I want the thing. So we're going to go get the thing. Because the more of these we get now, the just the easier things generally get. Proceed with extreme caution, Frey. Or we could, I don't know, go around? Turning back is always an option. Yeah, I can't zip up here, so just have to keep climbing the hard way. It is quite fun though to just kind of go on a big journey sometimes in these kind of games and just kind of just walk a long distance to get to a thing you want to get to, even if it's still this far away, because we're still having to go around here to get there. This particular area is kind of like a big yeah. U-shape around the, well, a horizontal U-shape around the castle. So we can't just kind of go behind the castle and just jump straight down here, because that's just not how the game world works. Or at the very least, at this stage, we won't be able to pull that kind of movement off. And of course, another belfry. Yeah. Which means on the fast travel point, so this means if we ever need to come this when we come back to these areas, it'll be a lot faster. And yeah, now we're back in the fields of the fallen, but a lot further south. And a lot closer to our destination. Yeah. And there's a lot of nice little photo to take here as well. This'll be a good one. And of course the photo is this rather interesting rock formation over here. I quite like the whole bright red glowing sort of visual. It's a really fun rock formation on this one. Kind of reminds me of something you've seen like a Mighty Max playset from the 90s. Has that vibe. And of course here's another way station on the way to the Fields of the Fallen. And here's what we're going for. Ah, so that's what I was hearing. So let's take our prize from the Rosewood Fount. So as I've mentioned, I have split this video into two parts because it's such a long one. This is the first part, and the second part will of course be the return to Sapal. Yeah, the point I was making earlier was Frey is clearly taking her journey a lot more seriously than most protagonists in video games do because she is actually treating the murder of Tanta Sila with the uh, gravity it deserves. She did commit premeditated murder and she is not okay with that. And I really like that. It really flies in the face of everyone that's all like, oh, she doesn't take it seriously at all. No, she's more serious than most video game characters about this journey. And that's why she wants out of it. So, uh, now we're playing with the new beacon power we've got. I'll see you next time as we return to Sepal. And see what happens now we've killed Sila. Wow, Bye. Please remember to like, comment and subscribe. And also join my Patreon. Uh, thank you for James Rossi for already doing so at the Bio Enchanted Legs tier.